Hi, this is Corin. Here's another Navisworks training video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Clash Detective reporting. So, in the first video, I talked about using the Clash Detective to find your clashes and group them together using the selection filter. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how we can further document and communicate uh, using some of the tools embedded within Navisworks. Um, I wrote this as the last point, but I actually want to really hone in on this thing. This is important. Um, what's the point of all this crap? That ultimately, I, I tell everyone in the, co in the coordination kickoff meetings that we're not looking to have a perfect model. That your goal as from doing 3D coordination or any time working in Navisworks is not just to have a beautiful looking Navisworks model. Sure, that's kind of nice. That makes us feel good. But ultimately, we want everyone to get their models updated to the point where they are able to do work in the field. And whatever that looks like, you can be creative on, on your side. Um, at Beck, at least right now, we don't have a whole lot of standards. That may be changing in the future, but for now, I'm here to show you some of these tools, and you can be creative in how you use them. So, let us jump back in. Where I left off in the last video was having a set of groups. Um, and I didn't do much with metadata here, but let's say I, I could have assigned all of these things. Oh, and I have I have auto zoom turned on right now, which I'm not quite ready to do yet. But if I had right clicked these groups, I could assign them. Say that these ones for for fire protection and this one is you can click up here and say plumbing. Lovely. So here we can be uh, sorting these things by plumbing. We can sort them by status. We can sort them back by name. We click on the top of this header. See, we, here it's going 7 to 1. Here it's going 1 to 7. Now, one of the nice things I like is these numbers are pretty pretty much arbitrary, right? I don't I don't particularly care about them. The reason I put a number up there is so that it does sort up to the top when I sort by name um, over the clash. If anyone else knows a better way to do that, I, I'm I'm all ears. I'd be I'd be glad to hear it. Anyways, so this distance that is just saying uh, how much is that clash overlapping. Remember, if our tolerance was less than a quarter inch over here, then it's not going to be there. Okay, I was just thinking <laughs> clearly that when I run these coordination, when I run these clash tests, and I didn't mention this in the last video, but if you have something hidden, for instance, if I had hidden some of the insulation in the other view, then that's going to be left out of the clash. Um, it's important to have everything turned on that you want to be in that clash test. Use that to your advantage. Um, I'll probably use that, I'll talk about that in the next video, uh, where I'm actually using it as a Clash Detective as a meeting tool. So, I can also sort this thing by proximity. And, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> I, I don't right click on the header like I do in Synchro. I do it here in the group. So let's say I was over on this side of the building. And if I did a sort by proximity, it wants to Okay. So the way I think I think this works is that somehow <laughs> I went to this corner of the building and it wasn't working at first. So what I did was click on this group, this one in green, and then theoretically, as I click down through here, yep, there's the big old mess, the first real clash, and it's, as it moves away, um, yeah, definitely. So. We, ha we have lots of different options for how we display these various clashes. 
<laughs> All right. So once I get them grouped, that we can do lots of different things with them. Now I, I'll say that I don't like to group clashes too early because. I don't like to group clashes too early on in the process because it makes things a little bit confusing. Um, and it can get us too focused in the weeds too early rather than looking at big picture items first. But what we're going to assume here is that it makes sense to make clash groupings. For instance, when you have like seven groups, yeah, by all, by all means, go make clashes. Absolutely. Um, now, in order for us to effectively understand what we need to do, we need to view the, that clash in the context of the rest of our building components. So I'm going to do this crazy thing and turn back on my architecture and see how long it's taken to refresh because of my computer. Oh, good night. Um, all right, and now I'm going to turn on auto zoom and hit escape. And I'm also going to turn off transparent dimming and not dim other. And let's see, I need to uh, shrink up my clash detective window a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I actually said approve to this one, and that, that might be okay because this thing is just barely touching right now. Right? Um, and what I'll do at this point is click changes. Now, what save changes does it it's going to lock in this viewpoint that is currently selected with the clash that I'm on so if I don't have that turned on um, Navisworks is just going to jump to that location and try to figure out the best view for the particular clash that we're working on with here so but like I just did there, I moved the viewpoint because the default view that Navisworks gave me wasn't really the best. So if I hit Save Changes, now every time I click on 002, it's going to go right to that level. And if I go to Make a Name, it's going to look here. Now let's say I wanted to look at this thing from above the ceiling like this and kind of zoom in a little bit. Now notice it's this one's here, this one's right up there. And now I click on this, A Name. Let's just pretend like somehow I got distracted and I went and looked out the window for a name. And then I went back to here. Hey, that one's still looking good. This one's still looking good. But my a name, oh no. That one is still locked in over here because I had save changes turned on. Luckily, what you can do is if you uncheck the save changes, it's going to jump right back to that clash. And you can recheck this at this point and give yourself a view that makes a little bit better sense. So, something like that. So then the first real clash. Cool thing is that if you do a shift middle mouse button on this, okay, so I went all crazy. Remember, uh, zooming is an undoable action in Navisworks. But if I do middle mouse button, shift, that's going to put the pivot point right on the center of that clash group. Very, very helpful. Very helpful. Okay, so what we do is just give ourselves a context of this thing to say what the heck needs to happen. Because here, if I didn't know that this is where the structural joist was, I could tell them, oh yeah, go ahead, just raise up the fire protection line. And it's like, no, you can't do that. You gotta watch out for the existing stuff. Right, so that's why I do the groupings um, off in space because I can do it very quickly. But then, in order to say what we need to do, we have to take a look at at the clash in context with the rest of the building. So here's my big old mess, and here I'm down below the slab. Lovely. So this is this whole disaster of a of a thing right there. And if if I'm like, wait, where was this thing? We hit dim other, and there we can see it. Exactly. So we've got that one. That's looking good. This one's looking good. And 
So what we can also be doing is making our review comments. So again, the markup tools in Navisworks are <laughs> frustrating at best. So a lot of times what I'll do is make an ellipse on here. If you don't like the color green, then you can switch it to whatever color you want. Again, if you don't like the colors I choose, feel free to make your own videos and put them up on YouTube. So, pardon me. So I can, you know, I can flip through this stuff all day, uh, switch, move the sprinkler, pretty bad view here definitely if you type something wrong you can right click on the theoretically right click on this text oh it's gonna it's gonna just be a total jerk to me isn't it come on baby <laughs> So, I'm not actually that fond of the review tools within Navisworks. Typically what I find myself doing is erasing the text and start over. If anyone has any better ideas, feel free to send them my way. Um, I don't like the cloud tool because you have to click 100,000 times to get anything. So, by and large, what I like to do is just my ellipse. or really like that. The big old mess. Um, I can make a line string on this. I always think this would be better with a touch screen. I could just, uh, you know, get up here with a pen and do one of these numbers. Okay, so once we've got, once we have everything in the correct location, we can continue our process, which is the reporting section. So sorting the viewpoints, markups, and then on to viewpoints reports. So. Once I leave this results tab, it's important to note that the highlighting options go away. So notice that now I'm on this report section, uh, all that highlighting stuff went away. If I had this dim other with my transparent dimming on, sure this looks great right here, but then off of the re report tab, off of the results tab, that doesn't exist. So the only time that Navisworks is going to be displaying those highlight results is when you are in the results tab. In the report tab it doesn't exist, if you're in the select tab it doesn't exist, it's only right here. So, that being said, um, I'm going to make a report of these seven clashes. And I don't remember the last time I only had seven clashes other than the training model. Usually there's a lot more than that. Um, so. What we're going to do is publish our group headers only for all of our clash types, and we're going to do the current test, not all all tests, as viewpoints. So viewpoints, um, there's another video on viewpoints, but if I hit write report, that thing is going to show up over here as a set of viewpoints. So what you'll see is all of these clashes will show up, and actually, as in a recent Navisworks uh, version release with a, a patch, um, the, the settings that we have on the results tab are exported to each of these clash viewpoints. It used to look exactly like everything was in the results tab. But now, as I click on these things, it's going to keep whatever settings I had in the results tab at the time that I published. So, we can just click on each one of these things and see where our issues are. and you're saying, but Corey, what about all those markups that we made? Well, you have to open up the folder and click on it, and that is how you see the markups that were created. Alright, oh, yeah, lovely. That one's pretty sexy. Okay. So I'm just just to show this that if I wanted to turn off highlighting, for instance, a lot of times I do that. Uh and even the highlight all clashes, that's uh Huh. <laughs> well, I wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting to see something there. <laughs> I 
I'm going to give it a shot because I'm crazy like that. So auto zoom, dim other with transparent dimming, auto reveal, highlight all items, none of that. So I'm going to write this report. And so this one was Dear Mother with Transparent Dimming. And this one, exactly, I had Highlight All turned on, but I did not have the highlighting function turned on. I did still have Transparent Dimming. So you can see that lots of different ways we can display this information. And here I'm going to do one more where I don't do I don't do a dim other, so there's no isolation. I turn highlighting back on, and I go to my report. I think it's this one. Yeah, see, so <laughs> it's definitely uh <laughs> okay. This one's pretty crazy because of the color of this original model. So point being we have a lot of different opportunity a lot of different ways we can play with this thing so i'm going to jump back into my results tab here go back to my default view go to my dim other and the last kind of report that i'm going to do viewpoints new coloration stuff that was pretty cool is I can change this report format to an HTML tabular. That one's kind of an interesting, and you can play with all these different kinds of versions. So I'm going to write this report to my temp folder, plumbing versus FP HTML. I'm going to hit save. And I'm actually going to open up Excel in the meantime. Hopefully I don't have anything inappropriate in here. All right, plumbing versus FP files. So if I was to double click on this, it opens it up in an internet browser. And these are all hyperlinks to those viewpoints. That's pretty awesome. And here you also get an image of each one of these things. So it's pretty powerful stuff. Turn off my Facebook, no one needs to see that. So we get access to all of these things as a with a lot of this information. Again, I end up not doing viewpoints all that much. But what I can do is bring them into everyone knows my favorite program, which is Microsoft Excel. And each of these groups has a line in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, pretty nifty. Again, how I did that was if I close this thing down, all I had to do was drag this HTML file on top of my Excel a blank workbook and I can turn it into this table. And then you can do, you know, made this one a done deal. Fantastic. So you could use this as a tracking tool. Again, guys, so let's jump back into this document. So you can make an HTML report, but ultimately, what's the point? The point is to communicate to your audience being the trade contractors um, and anyone else who needs to remedy these issues and get moving on down the road with the actual construction of your project. So if these tools are helpful, you know, if a viewpoints report is helpful, if the Excel spreadsheet is helpful, typically what I think the most helpful is is bring everyone in there with their laptop, communicate the issue, get it fixed during that meeting, be off down the road. Man, that's that's the best way, thing that I like to do. But you know, you've got a lot of power, and you can do whatever you think is most effective for your project. How to reach me, Corey.McDermott at gmail.com. Uh, I'd love to hear your, your feedback. So good luck, and happy clashing.